Having covered that ecosystems can exist in alternative stable states, a question arises. What does it take for an ecosystem to switch from one state to another? Resilience constrains ecosystem responses to perturbations. So again, if we take a look at an ecosystem response over time, and let's say there's an event here that causes a response, if, if an ecosystem is, or an ecosystem process is resistant to that event, you'll see no change. But it also might not necessarily be resistant, but be able to recover from that event relatively well. And so that resilience kind of covers the resistance and recovery aspects of ecosystems. And if you have an ecosystem that's incredibly resilient, it might actually be resistant to that change or recover to the same state. So if you have an ecosystem that we consider or an ecosystem process that's relatively resilient, that's going to constrain what the ecosystem response is. If there isn't any resilience, it can switch in any number of directions and recover or not. So you have all of these different outcomes that are possible. Again, we're gonna make sure we have a good definition of resilience, and this is a relatively new term in ecology for all intents and purposes, but within the common vernacular too. So when we talk about resilience, we're gonna talk about the capacity of an ecosystem to sustain its fundamental function, structure, and feedbacks in the face of a spectrum of shocks and perturbations. So what we're gonna talk about here is the capacity, so it's an inherent characteristic of an ecosystem. And we wanna think about how well it can sustain, which means what are the changes over time? And we wanna think about fundamental function, structure, and feedbacks. So we really, it's the function and structure. So it's not only what the functions are, processes that we measure, but different patterns, and the, that covers the structure. And then it's in the face of a spectrum of shocks and perturbations. And what that essentially means is gonna be disturbances and stresses. An ecosystem is more resilient to events that have occurred repeatedly. So although we think of resilience as gonna be a property of an ecosystem, it depends on what the event actually is. There are some events for which it'll have high resistance and then some events for which it'll have low resistance. And it's gonna depend on what type of event that you have. So for example, some e ecosystems might be very resilient or resistant to fire, but not necessarily so, so to cold snap. In other cases, low temperatures, ecosystems might be resistant to changes in temperature, but actually not be able to recover or resist fires. When events have recurred repeatedly, that changes the species composition that's present and other characteristics of the ecosystem that often generates greater resilience. So when we think about species communities, for example, there's sorting that's occurred. So when we start with our potential biota, that these are the proper gills that potentially could end up in an ecosystem and form the community there. But there are filters that occur that only allow some of those species through and others are gonna get blocked. And this is a process of sorting. And these factors that block species from colonizing or reproducing within an ecosystem are often disturbances, for example, or stresses, the same ones that are associated with the resilience of ecosystems and the temporal dynamics of different processes. So these events for which we might think about resilience are those events that also sort the flora and really only allow the flora to get species to get through that are able to resist stresses or recover quickly from them. So sorting is one of those factors, the sorting of a flora, sor sorting of a potential biota that's important in determining the resilience of systems. In addition, there's going to be selection. So in selection, what we have is the same general idea, but it's within a species. And so when you take a look at your potential biota, there's different species that have gotten through, but there's gonna be variability within those different species. And then there's selection that occurs where some genotypes are not gonna be favored and others are, and they're gonna expand over time. And this is the process of selection. So there's 
within species, there's going to be different genotypes of those species that are going to be preferentially favored and contribute to the resilience of ecosystems. Now, when we think about the disturbances and the stresses, those shocks and perturbations that were talked about, it's important to realize that these are not always going to be external to the system. So when we take a look at our ecosystem, we have state factors, and then we also have interactive controls and our state factors are out here and they're affecting the ecosystem but there's interactive controls too that end up affecting ecosystem processes and some of these interactive controls are ones that generate ecosystem dynamics and generate some of the time course over time and it's the internal dynamics of ecosystems that often generate fluctuations so there's no external perturbation that happens, but it's just internal dynamics and the result of different feedbacks that are occurring. There's a number of examples within the ecological literature of these internal dynamics of cycles that happen that are not externally generated. So here we have the interannual variation in flowering density of a shrub, and that's vaccinium, along with small rodents. And so the flowers are of the shrub, and it's think of it as a blueberry, and they're small rodents too. And so you can see that there's dynamics in the flowers, the flowering of those species, and that's associated with dynamics in the small rodents that might be impacted by the fruits of, of the species. There's approximately a four-year cycle of abundance, and part of the cycle is really being generated by the plant, and it has to do with the time course of the ability to build up enough reserves to, to produce flowers, and then recover and produce more flowers again. And the small rodents are mostly just responding to the variation that you see in flowering.